Hello dear Music Store TV viewers, very welcome here at the Super Booth in Berlin 2018 at the booth of uh, Instruo and I'm very happy to be here with the founder Jason. Hi. Hi. Well, we can see here a really beautiful synthesizer but Thank it you. seems to be much more than only one yeah, synthesizer. I've, I've had my head down for the last year and just uh, been developing non-stop. Like last year I had maybe four or five modules are showing off so yeah. Yeah, I think I think the count is up past uh, past 15 now so yeah lots lots of new things to show but uh, yeah, a little overview yeah, if yeah, cool. this is possible absolutely so what I'll do I'll show a combination of some of my controllers and uh, analog analog uh, oscillators and filters so I've got a patch going where I'm using four oscillators between two different modules. So the Troika is my uh, original, this is the first module I did as, as Instro, and it's a three voice oscillator, all sawtooth core, very much an East Coast approach. So there's a mixer on there so you can you can mix them together and track them simultaneously and get really, really warm mixed, uh, mixed tones for, for filtering. Uh, I'm using a fourth oscillator here, which is just adding in a, an additional sawtooth wave, and I'm mixing them here at a transistor low pass filter. which has a three-channel built-in mixer, uh, variable resonance. Uh, it will self-oscillate and track one volt per octave. It's, uh, it's very much uh, a classic you know, East Coast approach to design. The way I'm controlling them, I'm using a quantizer module of mine called the Harmony. This is hopefully somewhat familiar for you know, people who use quantizers where you have a selectable chord tones and then you know, whatever the incoming CV sources will define what, you know, what note is being played. The module itself generates four CB outputs though. So if you have all these oscillators tuned to a unison, this module will automatically tune the intervals to give you diatonic chords. And uh, there's a harmonic engine in there that I've developed which will, as you change the chord, as you change the, uh, the fundamental, the root note, it will keep the chords diatonic to the key. So I'll do, I'll put it into keyboard mode so I can directly play the keyboard. So we're listening to this module as the root, third, fifth, seventh, and then with these two controls, our CV controllable, I can change the the the, inter the, the inversion, so the layering of the, the tones and the voicing spread. So open, it spreads it out nicely to you know what a keyboard player would typically play on a keyboard. And as you can see, as I play up through a scale, it will change the chord quality to keep it relevant to the key. So even when you're playing notes that are, you know, if we're in the major scale, for instance, playing any of the black keys, which would normally be non-diatonic to the scale, it's going to keep it all musically relevant. So if I'm using a sequencer to... to control it, I can, I can perform it just like I would a normal monophonic quantizer, but it's going to give me full chords, so I'll be able to like quickly dial in different chord, chord progressions on the fly. So there's a lot of music theory content included, but I'll try to design in a way that you don't necessarily need to know the theory behind it. You can just play, experiment, you can try different you know, musical modes, so if I want to go into something minor, Here we go. It's very much set up for experimentation and you know, you might not know the exact harmonic center you're looking for for a composition or for a patch, but this will let you experiment, try and find things through, you know, the way that the way that people typically patch is just experimenting. You find lucky mistakes and it keeps things cordial. Maybe in the, patch. the mistake is the better way to make music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's a sort of combination of some of my like, analog voices and uh, control schemes. Uh, another module I've got here, which is called the Scion, is a quad random voltage generator that you can see the, the sort of graphic tree on there. That is being controlled by my interaction with uh, an electrode on the front. Alternatively, we can use sensor cables that, in this case I'm using two little clip-on ones. So these are designed to clip onto anything that is 
is organic. So either myself or a house plant or a pet if it's willing. And it uses you know, tiny fluctuations in resistance, capacitance in something organic to drive an analog circuit that is then analyzed to generate random voltages. So a bit of a strange way to get to you know, random notes. Well, but different data. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. So it's, a, you know, it's just a, an interesting organic way to drive random voltage generators. But um, I've been using, you know, collaborating with a few uh, sound artists or you know, people in installations and galleries and stuff where they'll use these, they'll have like, you know, plants or different things set up and that's driving an entire generative patch. So it's, uh, it's actually based on um, an open source device called the, the MIDI Sprout by a company called Data Garden. Uh, they're, all their algorithms and hardware is open source. So this is developing upon the platform they, they derived and uh, I've added, you know, I've built it directly into Eurac so that you have CV output, gate output and you know, direct hands-on control for, for integrating into a patch. So you can have your house plant control your, control your composition. To show a bit how yeah. that sounds? Yeah, so let me throw together something quickly with a... Uh, I'll use a different oscillator now into a filter. Now I'll use the first output to control the frequency. There we are, so this should just be a sorted wave and a filter. So you can see as the colors light up, blue, green, yellow, orange, they actually line up to the four vertical channels. So as there's a new blue pulse, that's selecting a new random voltage, as well as setting a new duration for the gate output. So I could use that gate to drive an ADSR and use that ADSR to open my filter. So it doesn't have to be me, it could be a plant, and then it's, you, you have a de degree of sensitivity where it will control the, uh, the rate at which it's going to respond and interact. Uh, but you don't necessarily need to use a plant or any sort of uh, your organic input. Uh, the, in the sensor input will take any complex audio signal, so something preferably with like, your sharp edges, so like a square wave or something, and that can be used as the, as the source of control. So there have been instances where I've used a scion at the heart of my patch as the random source for generating the composition and then my master audio signal as the output I patch that in as the input source so they, you end up with this yeah it's an entire feedback system where the patch is self-composing itself which is you know quite an interesting way to to approach things I find mean. a bit more interest I will add the fourth channel in here to the wave folder on this, this voice so that's now one channel controlling the pitch one controlling the cutoff frequency of the filter and the other one changing the timbre of the filter and you know these can be any parameters in, in any patch, so it gets. It's all about creating circles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like drawing, looping things back in and just finding different ways to to interpret the you know the, the input source. Yeah. yeah. So and at the end here yeah. we have it, it looks like an equalizer, but it is not. There's, it's not. So this is a this is a, a combination of uh, various stages of development of different modules. Uh, here we've got the the EAS, which is. You know, a very straightforward logic module, uh, AND gate, OR gate, XOR, not the tic -tac, this is actually a trigger delay module. So if I use some sort of clock source, patch it in, you will see you've got these outputs here that are cascading down. So I've got control CB over the decay time, and it will delay and stagger, stagger the pulses. So for if you use something with a regular clock, if you have a master clock in your system, patch into this, 
small amount of modulation over the delay time and you will have these very musical organic you know, subdivisions and, and patterns. Uh, ratcheting can be turned on so it will like repeat certain notes. You can rotate the outputs, set the duration so you've got it triggers versus gates. It's a very fun way to get very you know, musical sounds, mu musical rhythms from a very rigid master clock. Uh, this module is coming, coming very soon. It's uh, just about to go into production. Uh, beside it, I've got a new VCA called the Vinca, which is a two-channel VCA. The top section is four-quadrant ring modulation, so there's a bias as well as a 10U verter over the input signal. And it can either run in parallel, summing at the output, or in series running through the secondary VCA, which is a more standard just uh, amplitude control where you have uh, linear to exponential control. And the design on these is uh, chainability. So one thing I've been trying to find a, a, the best way to do in, in certain modules where I want to be able to expand and have multiples linked together, uh, a lot of time is ribbon cables in the back. I wanted to try and you know, keep something that was a bit you, know, you, you weren't tied to having you know, a limited length of ribbon cable. So on the back of the module itself are two jacks, an input and an output. So underneath, you can once you're, in, you know, once you're installing, you can have a patch cable hidden in the back that will patch it directly to another. Yeah. So this one is actually linked through to this one here. So if I patch in, I've got two a two-channel input mixer, essentially. So level and level, and that's going to arrive here. So these can just be chained and chained, and they can be anywhere in the system. So. This one's coming very soon. Uh, the TSL is now available to purchase direct. Uh, this is another oscillator. This is a uh, oscillator number three. The CSL has become number four. So uh, I've been working on a lot of oscillators this year. So <laughs> seems to have been a theme. And this guy is a small triangle core oscillator, six HP. It's got five uh, individual outputs. There's sine wave, triangle wave, square wave, which is a, a sub either one octave or two octaves below. There's a wave folder, which is a little bit more unique from the wave folder I've used in uh, you know, my previous design. Uh, this one includes a symmetry control, so there's a little bit more range of, of timbre. Uh, I'll patch this in here. Wave folder, the last voice is a pulse of modulation source, which with the bottom pot turned all the way clockwise you end up with a it's like a double pulse square where the center pulse is what expands in and out which is a slight variance of the typical duty cycle pwm uh, bringing the bottom pot all the way around it cross fades it to a a split uh, a split inverted triangle so the original source is then mixed with the, the same pulse of modulation circuit so it's just two different characters that are you know variable in between the two. So I tried to fit as as many outputs as I could into, into a 6 HP package. And uh, I guess to finish off, I can show off the Nyonic, which is a, it's kind of a work in progress. This was a commissioned build for a friend of mine who uh, was looking originally for a collection of faders, just as uh, you know, CV sources for, for various modules in his patch. Uh, so I felt there were a few more things I could do to you know, add some functionality to that. So there's an output per each fader, which has its own slew limiter, so you can slew the, the rate at which the fader moves. There's also an input, so if you pass your signal in, the fader now becomes an attenuator over that signal. The, the gate outputs at the top are currently, they're just set to act as, as manual gates, but uh, you know, I have a lot of ideas for different digital implementation of functions to, to add in. Uh, each channel can also be enabled or disabled to a mix bus. So I could group you know, these three channels, for instance, and mix audio to a single output while using these ones just as you know, CV controls or... So a dynamic mixer? Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh, Nyonic, it's a Scottish word which translates to weird or strange. I thought it was suitable uh, you're for from this. Glasgow. I'm from Glasgow, yeah, yeah. So a lot of the names are some some variant of uh, of Gaelic, um, and yeah, the, the end. The uh, Tan H3. So this is, I don't know if uh, many people will be familiar with Max MSP and PD. But, uh, there's an object in there called the Tan H object, which uh, if you imagine taking a sawtooth wave in, which you'd have a linear ramp, uh, the Tan H would turn it into more of an S curve, which uh, outlines the shape that's on the the graphic. So it's a, it's a wave shaper, but it can function as a single knob limiter or overdrive. Uh, it's very useful when you're using 
uh, lots of positive feedback in a patch. So if you have a reverb that is feeding back into itself or a delay, if you run the feedback signal through a TAN-H, it adds a certain degree of limiting control. So you can have you know, a very busy delay patch where there's lots of, lots of feedback, but it won't run away and explode. It will just, like, you can get a really nice sweet spot where it just self-oscillates and layers up very, very musically. Well, um, so last question, well, or let's say the last question is not the price or availability. Uh, the availability, thing is, you, you most, can buy them yeah. separately. You don't have to buy this box. You can buy Indeed, uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're all individual modules. Uh, currently, the Troika is most readily available from uh, many stores, including, yeah. including uh, Music Store. Uh, a lot of them are on the brink of being production ready. So they will be, the, certain ones will be available from retailers as soon as I can as soon as I can make them. A lot of the other ones are available direct, like things like the CSL, the very new modules, the TSL, CSL, uh, the new filter, they're going to be available direct for a short period while you know, I'll be building by hand until larger scale production is in, in process. So. Thank you very much for your explanation. Well, thank you. <laughs> much more information like prices, availability, everything else about Instruo on musicstore.com. Thank you for your attention. Very good stuff, it's true. Thank you.